Um, okay, so let me go ahead and first pull up. I haven't checked if there were any questions. Um, so this is kind of like our last like official study group before we go into like project like our project mode stuff. Um, so let me pull up questions and then I guess I should just share my screen. Oh good, there are questions. That's good. So let me share. Here we go. I'm actually gonna close some of these guys since we don't need all these tabs up right now. Okay. So cool, cool. All right, so let's see here. Uh, some questions. Section 20. So interactions. In this lesson, to see the interaction between origin and horsepower, they multiply the two. The resulting R squared was increased in the new variable. Horse origin will have a significant p-value. Um, so I'm guessing that's like a low p-value, right? Uh, why would we multiply a continuous variable by a categorical variable? Interesting, right? So origin value is one, two, or three. Horsepower, obviously, it was more of a continuum, right? Um, they don't seem like they shouldn't be multiplied together for, for significance as origin isn't a true value. Wouldn't it make more sense to separate these three origins, um, three origins and test and see if these three sets of horsepower are statistically significant from each other? Yeah, so what's kind of cool is that that's actually what's going on here. So um, kind of reiterating on this question is that you have, um, and actually I have uh, the lesson that we're going to go over. So that's not it. There we go. Sorry, I'm pulling up a lesson that we're going to go over to anyway. But I think it helps if I do a visual. So I think this is more or less, here we go. I think this is actually the, like from the curriculum, right? This is look familiar to people, right? So um, this work case, we have horsepower and then MPG. And then basically uh, the curriculum labeled each origin one, two, and three as uh, separate points. Um, you can kind of think, well, like, look, the way I like to think about this when we're first starting off is um, I'm much more comfortable with looking at the equation first. So like, let's think what this equation would be like for this linear regression line. And remember, even though we see three different lines, we're really thinking of it as like one equation, one model for this line. So let's consider like y equals, so y is our um, prediction, right? And I'll do y hat, usually we say y hat, meaning that's our prediction value, right? Um, and we'll have like some, we're gonna ignore the intercept just to make it easy, right? So ignore the intercept. And then we have like, let's say, um, I'll just call H as horse, right? And then some coefficient, I'll just call it A1. So some number, right? Plus um, A2. And then uh, origin, we'll just call it O. Okay, there's my fancy O. All right, so that's kind of like what we have here. And the thing is people kind of go, it's like, like I think in this case, this is not what we're doing completely. We're actually considering the case of like, well, we have another part um, or what we want to do is essentially have our horsepower times our origin, right? Times some coefficient. Let's say this is like A3. Okay. So the thing is like, it's nice to break this down right here to think like, well, okay, what does this look like? Because one thing is origin only goes one, two, or three, right? And let's say we keep it one, two, and three. We don't do any like fancy one hot encoding yet. Um, if we just keep it like that, but we could do one hot encoding. What you realize is that essentially what this means is that this is going to change um, this value right here is going to be A3 times H, right? Whatever the horsepower is going to be. And then you can kind of think of it, it can be like three different values. It can be one, it can be two, it can be three, right? So that's the kind of way I imagine it, which is kind of like saying, okay, like in, you could one hot encode and this kind of comes out automatically. It's basically saying A1 H plus A2 sigma, and then plus that interacting term, that interacting term is either going to look like A3 times H times one, which is just A3 H, or it'll be A3 times two. So I'll put two A3 H or three times A3 H. Okay. Does that make sense to people so far, right? And if you think about that case, right, it's like also this would create, um, you know, this would be not actually sigma or not sigma, uh, O. It would be either one, two, or three since we're kind of considering that. So in a lot of ways, what we're looking at is actually three different equations. Y hat is equal to, you guys remember like, um, like stepwise functions, like back in like school where you split those things up. That's kind of what we're doing here. We have A1 times H plus, you know, I'll just put like one plus A3 H, right? And then we have similar A1 H. You guys all see where this came from, this first equation, right? 
OK, cool. If, if I'm confusing anyone, uh, please stop me. So plus 2, plus 2, A3H. And then we have our last one, A1H plus uh, 3 plus 3 AH, A3H, right? And so I can like, you know, rearrange this and stuff like that. And basically what it comes down to is that we have some number, right? Some value, um, instead of being just like, oh, like, you know, we can keep this separated. It basically ends up being something like um, each of these kind of evolve to some constant times H plus some other constant, right? And that's equal to y hat, which is just a line, right? It's just that it's going to be a different line for each one. And that's what this um, multiplying the category times um, this continuous variable is going to do. Essentially, it's, I think it does a really great job on the curriculum showing that they're basically three different lines, you know, represented each color here, a yellow, red, and like a bluish purple, right? Is that this allows you to see this, that there's actually three different lines. And that's what we're going to see. We're going to see, like, if you were to write this out, right, it would be something like um, H times A1 plus A3, multiply that by it like the whole thing plus one, right? But this one would be something like, uh, let's see here, 2A3 plus A1 times H, I'm trying to make sure I don't run out of room, um, plus uh, two, right? So like, you're gonna have a new intercept, right? Your new Y intercept. And this is the new value, the new slope for that H. And you can kind of think of it like, okay, well, how do we interpret this? Like, what does that mean? Like we can write the equations out and we can see it's three separate lines. The interpretation of this is that maybe different origins, I think origin is supposed to represent like, you know, different regions of the world and stuff like that that it came from, is that maybe um, horsepower in certain regions um, affect, you know, the miles per gallon more, more or less than um, another car. The reason why this y-intercept, you know, I'm only considering like these two different features. Uh, so like this y-intercept is like maybe the base um, fuel efficiency in this origin two or origin three is better than this other origin, um, you know. So the idea there is like we have a different y-intercept. We start off basically on the base of like oh, like essentially zero horsepower, which of course like I don't think it actually exists in any way. But you can kind of imagine it's like oh, that's like our base of being like oh, if horsepower is the same, which origin tends to do better? And then as we increase in horsepower, maybe for example origin three it's kind of hard to tell from this like, like like origin two does a really good job at first you know like um has pretty efficient cars you know considering horsepower but as you increase in horsepower uh, origin you know one and blue here actually does really well and continuing to make it efficient right so that's the kind of idea of what you're building up from here so in short basically it's like yeah you can multiply these um categories in um what's it called uh um, numerical features together. And really what that creates basically, I like to imagine like when you have a category, it's kind of like, and this is not even just interacting features, but just categories. It's kind of like just shifting up the line up and down. Uh, in this case though, because we have interacting, it doesn't just shift the line up and down. It also kind of like adjusts the slope, right? Depending on the how, how much it interacts with each other. Does that make sense to people? Give me a thumbs up if that sounds good. All right, any questions like, I see, I see, I saw Jessica kind of go, eh, maybe not. Um, do you have a, maybe you could ask a question? That was, that? yeah, that was my original question. Okay. Uh, yeah, I just, it didn't make sense why we would multiply the values by like one and two and three when really like they don't mean anything. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and this is where turn techni something. <laughs> technically you should like one hot encode this, right? Because one, two, and three, why is it one, two, and three? And in that case, if we want hot encode it, it would be something like, instead of just O like this, it would be like, I'm trying to do like O sub one, <laughs> um, and then O sub two, and O sub three. And so you'd still have the same thing, but you'd only have two different lines, basically. Like if I ignore these other two, and I just say, like, is it origin one or is it not origin one? It's going to be a line that looks like this or a line that's going to be moved up or down, depending on what the feature is. And then because it's interacting, it'll also be like an adjusted slope. Um, and then you do the same thing for each um, each of these origins. So that's one way to think of it. Too. Yeah. Yeah, because it makes sense to treat them separately. Um, mm -hmm. But I was just imagining they were like all becoming one and then being multiplied by different numbers. Okay. 
I think I like know. you're saying, oh, because like there's like this part right here. It's just like continuous data, right? And then it's mm -hmm. lined up with like categorical data, but then they're being multiplied. So then I've, I just envision like all of this like continuous data, um, but like being scaled. I don't know if that even makes sense. But conceptually, I, I get that like, I don't know, it treats them separately even when they're multiplied. Okay, good, good. Yeah, I think one part, like I will actually Can go I, back I, a little. Oh yeah, go ahead, Stephen. So, so like with, with that, so like we're kind of talking about it really abstractly with like origin one, two, and three. If we were talking about like, you know, Japan, US, and Europe for cars, if we switched the number that we assigned to each origin, would the position of the line change or is the equation kind of doing away with the change in y intercept that you would get by just like multiplying times a random number that you chose? Yeah, yeah. You're so you're kind of saying like, what if we switched origin two and three? Like, how would this kind of change overall? Especially because we're we're still using the data in the end, right, to determine if it's doing a good job. And in short, it's like, yeah, it would actually affect um, how these lines. Like, they wouldn't just simply be like these same lines but different colors. Um, you might actually get the slope slightly different because of this. You know, you can see this part right here, right? Is that we have this guy in here, and that's going to affect what it is. And that's because when we use numbers like one, two, and three for categories, we're inherently saying that three is three times as more, like origin three is three times more than origin one, whatever that means. And when we talk about, like you said, like, you know, Japan, North America, Europe, or something like that, like those comparisons, it doesn't necessarily make sense to say that automatically that it's like, oh, North America is three times more than Japan or whatever. Like, it doesn't really have much meaning. And that's why we want hot encode, code, is that way we keep it separate. We're basically, we're saying, oh, yes or no, essentially. Is it North America or is it not North America? And then we do that for each country and stuff like that. Um, what kind of helps, and I think this is where I was starting to go towards in a second, is that if you consider this categories without ever looking at interacting features even, like we one hot encode, right? And we have like, y is equal to, um, I'm just gonna put like, uh, I'm just gonna put just one feature in this case. So let's say it's intercept, like you know, intercept b plus a zero times um, feature zero, right? Usually you just do one, but that's okay. And then we have, um, so like we have this part and this can either be zero or it can be one. Right? That means we either have B um, plus A zero, whatever that number is, times zero, well, that's just B, or we have B plus um, A zero times one, which is just A zero. So what this basically does, if you look at this mathematically, remember B is just a number, A zero is just a number. What this does basically is you have a line that, you know, in this case it's a straight line, but like you have a line that intercepts at B, or you have a line that intercepts at, you know, assuming A zero is positive, B plus A zero. And so really what categories do by themselves without interacting is just shifting the line up or down. Um, and because we're one hot encoding, we only shift it up a little by little. Basically it kind of at, like having, I kind of think of it like when you have a category and it's like, he's like, oh yes, it's this category. It like changes the Y intercept. So if I had like another feature over here, like let's say X2, like plus X2, plus X2. Like essentially what this looks like this guy right here looks like a new y-intercept constant, constant, right? A new intercept. Um, and basically just means it shifts the line. But if you have interacting features, you'll have a new, um, like a constant here and a constant here because you have x2 and x, um, whatever this other feature, like uh, x0 in this case, they're interacting. So this is also going to change too. So you'll get not just adjustment, but also adjustment of the slope. Does that kind of answer a lot? Hopefully that's there's a thing a little bit more. Okay. Yeah, go ahead, Jessica. I don't, okay, cool. So I just have one more question. I don't want to like make you spend too much time on this. But um, so if we multiply, if we create the new horsepower origin, then we would multiply the horsepower here by origin one, two, and three. And so like you were saying, so blue would stay there, um, red would go up a little, and then yellow would go up a little more. And then we would have just one fit line going through them all. Yeah, it, so you're saying like how do you how does it all combine together like with this? Yeah, because it becomes one, it becomes only one variable. It becomes horse like horsepower origin, like horsepower underscore origin. So then it's just like but like data points, but some get scaled up and then there's just one fit line going all the way through it. Right? Yeah, so 
the thing about this and the reason why we have three different lines is because basically we have another part which is essentially like we have horsepower we have miles per gallon and we also have origin which is now three-dimensional data put it on 2d and then we actually have like weirdly enough we have a fourth dimension now which is horsepower in origin interacting and so you would actually have just one high hyper dimensional plane right so like a, a 3d well i guess it's a 3d plane which i don't a 3d shape right but it's a hyper dimensional plane going through 4d the problem is it's really hard for us to like actually plot that down like you know in 4d space so we're projecting it down if we had um no interacting feature you would see these points right here right it would be three-dimensional you can imagine a 2d plane going through 3d 3d and we'd have this line here the problem is that now we're also considering a fourth dimension which is the interacting feature but it should still be represented by one single hyperdimensional plane which is our model um it's just that to show that we like not trying to get into like whole you know um like multiple dimensional linear algebra and stuff like this you know, basically it manifests itself we can represent it by saying oh it's like three separate lines on this data point but really it's like oh there's actually like one model, one thing that's representing this whole thing, one equation, essentially. Okay. I, mean, I, th I think yeah. that's kind of what you were saying already, right? It's yeah, that was my, like, I get it when there are three separate ones. Like, I feel like mm -hmm. that's super clear. Um, it was just when they became, like, one, and then we're going to, mm -hmm. like, fit one line to, like, multiple, like, some are scaled, but we're going to fit one line through all of them. Um, mm -hmm. And then that just didn't make sense to me, but it makes sense when they're separate. But then what you're saying I get is it kind of becomes, like, more complex but like it just works i don't know <laughs> yeah it's it, in the end it's like it's so easy to write like an equation like x1 let's let's just say like o like origin by itself and then plus h and then plus we'll call it h o right and, and then plus some intercept when mm -hmm. they're one hot encoded that makes sense because it keeps them separate it's mm -hmm. just when they're multiplied that it's like yeah it like it's it's one of those things that's like technically when you have interacting features you can still have it like a like this multiplied together it's just that the categories because it's one two and three it'll just kind of like essentially you can think of it like it's scaling up the whole like i don't know if this helps but it scales up like that feature um it, this is probably not what you'd want to do though you'd probably want to one hot encode because then i think also it makes sense it's separated as well um and it doesn't build up this extra structure where you know origin two is like twice as good as origin one, which really isn't what we're trying to say here in this category. Well, thank you. <laughs> no problem. No, and I, I wanted to go in extra detail. Like don't 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 feel bad about asking this question. Because I think categorical variables and then interacting on top of that can be very like very confusing. Um, and I think that's one that I think a lot of people I, I would say is that if you try to write out the equation, like I think it's a good practice to try to see what the mathematical representation is and then try to interpret that of being like, well, what does that exactly mean? Um, and building it up from simple cases to like more complex cases. Um, but in the end, it's just like, it's like, oh, there's some value predicted based on all of these things. Um, you can think of the equation as like a machine that you just feed in the values and out spits out this prediction, which is y hat. Or you can kind of think of this whole thing as being like, oh, like hyperdimensional space and stuff like that, which, sometimes makes more sense, but sometimes can also kind of break your brain a little bit trying to think about how to envision it. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. But good question on this. Um, I mean, good. We spent a good amount of time on this. So that's great. Um, oops. Didn't mean to do that. All right. So there was another question on here. Uh, maybe this is related to interactions lab. The stats models gave the smallest eigenvalues 2.29 e to the power of 20, or well, times 10 to the power of 29. This might indicate there is a strong multicollinear problem that is designed. What are eigenvalues? Okay, <laughs> how do, and how do they relate to multicollinearity? So um, first thing I'll, I will say is that for what you have, basically this comes from the documentation from stats models. So um, you s probably should specifically look at stats models. I unfortunately am not as familiar with stats models. It's not something I use. Um, I will admit that. Um, so I'm not exactly sure why it's getting this warning, for, like what it's doing to get to this warning. Um, but basically what's happening is that this is where like remember how i said oh you multicollinearity there's more there's more complex ways to do this but we're going to skip over this right now um this is kind of this issue is that when i talked about pca principal component analysis 
um, that is actually using something called eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Um, PCA components are actually eigenvectors and we can actually use those eigenvectors and stuff like this. So basically what it's trying to tell you is it's like, hey, based on the features you have, like I don't know what it's doing internally with stats models, um, but it's figuring out this eigenvalues already um, and saying, hey, like you already have a lot of multicollinearity. You like might want to consider, you know, what to do with this. I think that's why it's giving you this warning. It's not doing anything. It's not changing your results. It's just kind of, I think it's maybe a nice thing that stats models tries to do, maybe because a lot of people using stats models come across this all the time. So it's kind of built into it. Um, so it's giving you this warning. Um, but at least code wise, it should work fine. Uh, what are eigenvalues? I mean, we'll talk about this in the future um, when we talk about especially uh, PCA. Um, um, I sent, mm -hmm. Yeah, I just want to just want to throw in that if you um, in uh, three blue, one brown, there's also a good video on mm -hmm. uh, on eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Yeah. Yes. So. Um, when we go into mod three, we'll start going into like linear algebra stuff, like kind of a review, like the first few sections. Um, he has like three blue, one brown. All the instructors agree is that he has a set of linear algebra like videos. Uh, one of them being eigenvalues, eigenvectors. Um, watch that like it is like it is like a really great representation like a visual representation of linear algebra stuff that we'll talk about he actually talks about more than we even need um but it's really well done but it's all about transforming space baby yeah i, I really like again for the record three root one round like the way he does like this stuff it's like it's like yes this is how you should think about it and most classes including like the way i learned eigenvalues and eigenvectors is, well, it's kind of weird because I learned it from linear algebra and I learned it from physics. Um, but you can kind of think of eigenvalues, eigenvectors as being like eigen meaning true. Um, there is some inherent structure of the data that is like the true representation of our axes. So like instead of having, you know, like origin and horsepower and whatever features we have, like, you know, drawn out in like, you know, parallel or not parallel, perpendicular from each other to make like our graph you can think of it and say, well, what is the true, what's the best way to represent this? Um, you know, when I say best, you know, in quotes, um, but we can kind of define what that means. Basically it means, um, when we say best, it means like, what's the, what's, what kind of axes, if we could redraw the axes on this like blob, can we make it so that there's not much change in this data points? Um, I, know I'm, I know it's technically not needed for this, but I think just to kind of emphasize, because we'll get back to it, um, what I mean by that is like, if you have data, let's say you have this as um, your coordinate X1, and this is like X2, right? So these are your axes, right? And then you have like data that looks like this. We can describe each of these points, right? As like, you know, oh, that's X1 comma X2, right? Like that is that data point, like whatever those exact points are. But another way we can think of it is like, well, what if we just drew a new axis like this. And it's like, well, that's going to be a lot easier than just saying it's above or below this one axis. So like we can call this like, you know, X new. Okay. That's what principal component does. And this is essentially this guy right here. Um, I'm really summarizing really like, you know, going through, this is your eigenvector. So it basically says, oh, can we draw a new axis that better represents the data, basically the least amount of variation um, from each data point. And that would be you know, this new part. So anyway, it's just saying, hey, you got multicollinearity, you might want to check that out. So um, it's a nice thing that stats model does. I don't actually know exactly how it determines that, um, like specifically, I'm sure the documentation somewhere it exists where it can tell you, but I don't know personally. So yeah. Any? Okay, yeah. Anyway, I probably gave more than you guys needed to on this part, but um, sound pretty good. Any kind of further questions either from these guys or um, anything else you guys have?